Good morning and welcome to church. This is the Covenant Nation and we are, we here are delighted to welcome you yes, to you. this service. This is our second live transmission for today and we've had an amazing, amazing service already. So we welcome you to church. This is the time for you to attend church. Before we go into anything today, quickly tell someone it's time for church. Put the link of the platform that you're on, um, send it to them, put it on your WhatsApp update, and say, let's have church, okay? Um, we're live on our YouTube channel, on Facebook, um, Instagram, um, X, Twitter. <laughs> we're live everywhere, and we invite, and then of course on our website, at www.insightfulliving.org forward slash live stream. And we're asking you to join us for church. If this is your first time, it is the beginning of great things. You have made the right choice. This is the place to be. It's a beautiful morning here in Lagos, and I know you're having a beautiful day because it's the day that the Lord has made, and all of us are rejoicing. We're glad in it. We're thanking God for making such a beautiful day. He always does, doesn't he? It does. It does. It's a beautiful day. It's wet today, Lagos. It is wet right now. But wet is good. Wet, wet. <laughs> the last couple of days, so it's so a Right. So what is good? Also. Yeah, we're grateful either way. Showers of blessing. All right. Okay. So we welcome you to church. If it's your first time, go to our website at www.insightsforliving.org forward slash new to church. And, you know, let's hear about your experience. Let's meet you by filling the form that is there. And um, we invite you to join us in any of our services, in any of our centers, which you can find the details also on our website. And then you follow those centers that are close to you or you want to know more about um, on Instagram on all our social media handles. But of course, we have a central Covenant C Center yeah. handle on X and on um, Instagram. And of course, the Covenant Nation on Facebook. There's always something coming out of here that is a blessing, you know, to your life, to people around you. Like our recent pastor's conference. Yeah, phenomenal. I yeah. Mean, um, it's, it's the sort of conference that you attend that is a mind shift. Yep. Which is what happens. A lot of pastors, a lot of ministers, a lot of people that are Individuals. involved in church work, yep. you know, are learning that the way one generation away from, you know. Extinction. extinction. That's a profound you know, statement. It's, it's very profound. <laughs> and you know what? The picture that came to my mind when that statement was made, I was trying to crystallize it before, is you know when you have a domino set up. Mm -hmm. And you know you, you trigger it and then it goes. And yeah. And some some can be very complex. But removing a piece of that domino, you know, setup can break the flow. Yeah. You know, and that's the exact same thing that Pastor Al was sharing. That one shift of that generation, missing out a generation, can break the flow. Yeah. You know, that has happened over generations. So it's important that we involve generations, mm. reach that gap. Yeah. You know, where and it it's like you said earlier, it starts mm -hmm. from. The home, you know, it, yep. starts, it starts with us. Yeah. Things that we, how do we engage our children? How do we engage mm -hmm. our kids in even morning devotion, yeah. devotion on the house, Bible study, and all of that? So we, yeah. we start to engage them and then involve them in various ministries and work in church. Absolutely. You know, the Bible says in Deuteronomy 7 9, we're talking about God that we therefore know that the Lord your God he is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. And you have to keep his commandments. There's a condition to that. And it says in Deuteronomy 4, before then, night 10, talking about, um, um, no, maybe, let me not read that. Let me read 11, 18 to 21. Therefore, you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul and bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall teach them to your children. Speaking of them, when you sit down in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up, and you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates, that your days and the days of your children may be multiplied in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give them, like the days of the heavens above the earth. So there's, there's no other way as in it's an instruction. It starts from the home, the church, the community, the marketplace is a reflection of what starts in the home. So if we want to change our world, we start from our dining table. Uh, that's and that's God. That's God's original plan. Yeah. You know, the ministry is actually the ministry starts from the home. You know, mm -hmm. the husband, the wife, the yeah. children. You know, working together. 
the putting up the demo. Yeah, essentially and saying, even though it was a pastor's conference, you are first of all a pastor, a pastor in, your, in your, home. your own home. So yeah. really, it's for everyone, literally. It, it, it is. It is. It and is. that takes us into our Bible study for this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and this morning, we'll, 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 we'll be talking about, it's a case study. Yeah. You know, in the last couple of weeks, we're, we've been looking at how we can apply those things that we've been learning about the accessing God life, God accessing life. the God life. And today we're looking at a case study of um, a lady called Susan, who um, haven't been unemployed for a very long time, um, um, gained employment yeah. um, through a friend, Debbie. And in entering that business, it's a cosmetic business, she noticed that um, there were et ethical, you know, uh, unethical practices that were going on, you know, so they will meet, they will discuss, and um, she felt uncomfortable being a Christian, you know, mm -hmm. that this is really not right. And so she was torn between, what do I do with this information that I have? Do I go I to report? You know, how do I go about reporting it? Uh, but in conversation with her friend, she, the friend was trying to convince her, look, that people actually need, you know, because people were involved in private practices as well. That people are put on company time, using company mm. resources and all of that. Um, but she, the, the defense that our friend gave was that people actually need it because yeah, the so country you know you tight. You yeah, <laughs> you know, country tight, you know, and all of that excuse. But she, in our spirit, she's not convinced. Um, but to add to the complexity, the company then goes ahead to increase the target for them, you know, because they were looking at growth and all of that. So apparently it has become even difficult for Susan you know, to survive on what she was earning. But she knows that, you know, in having to meet the company target, she probably would not be able to undo, you know, this private practices, even yeah. if done ethically. So the question is, how should Susan approach this matter? And um, earlier we, we were talking about it and we said, look, it, it, it's um, as the first things first, as believers, we're expected to shine yeah. wherever we go. Yeah. The Bible says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. They know that you are worshipping. You are a worshipper of the Father in heaven. You know, and you know, because of that, they know that there is a certain standard. The Father in heaven, God who is above all, expects of us as believers. And so believers are expect, uh, unbelievers or people in the world are also expecting that same standard. But God then says that you should ensure that your light shines before men. So first things first, you know, where even if, he, regardless of the situation and the circumstances that Susan has found herself, you must continue to shine yes. in your place of work. Mm -hmm. You must be a shining light. Yes. You must be a shining example. People will know that, look, this is a believer. There are certain boundaries yeah. that this person will not cross. There are certain things that this person would not do. And there's a certain level of expectation, you know, from this individual because we know that she worships the true God, yeah. you know. And that's what God is saying, so that they can see that true work, that, that they can see your works and give glory to, to him. Father. You know, so I haven't said that. So what should Susan then begin to do? Um, first things first, understanding that we, in whatever situation we find ourselves as believers, there's a key component that the Bible says is necessary for us to function in this earth. Jesus said to the disciples, I send you a sheep among wolves. Therefore, be wise in your approach. In the way you deal with the wolves. Jesus knew that, look, the wolves are always, the wolves are, well, wolves are always bad, Right? And he's sending out sheep. When you, when you release sheep among wolves, wolves will devour sheep. But he's saying, look, there's a way out. And that way is wisdom. The Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. Right. Therefore, get wisdom. And you're getting, get understanding. understanding. You know. And so, as, a, as believers, we must always ask and pray for wisdom yeah. in every situation. So, God, there is this situation. Give me the understanding. Give me the wisdom on how to and that's part of the God life we were talking about. You must always approach everything that you see, yeah. every circumstance, with the wisdom of God. So you move on from there to say, okay, so what must I do? Um, because this is a real, real scenario, you know, it can, I mean, people, it can be. People, people, and, people and, encounter this, you know. So how do you approach it in the place of God? 
Um, certain organizations have um, certain laid down procedures and policies, policies, you know, that can guide through, you know, reporting unethical behaviors within organizations. So the first thing is, does your company have something like that? You know, a channel through which you can report yeah. things, you know. Uh, but someone said, you know, in reporting things, you must also understand that it's not by hearsay that you are reporting yeah. something. So it's not, oh, someone said something, and then you go ahead to report without certain evidence on ground. That in itself is wrong. That in itself can get anybody in trouble because you then you don't have anything. It could be misconstrued as... You know, false accusation. Yeah. You know, so you must be careful. So, must, number one, you must have that evidence, and then use the organizational channel provided to, you know, present it. But you also have to do it in wisdom. Mm -hmm. Where that channel is not available, wisdom comes into play here. You are saying, okay, so who can I have a conversation? With? Do you have bosses that are receptive? Because you can go and report to a boss that is also in on the whole thing and it can get yeah. you further into trouble you know so understand okay so who are the people who can i have a conversation is that is senior enough that can make that you know that can help yeah. us to correct mm. things you know so it's approaching these matters with wisdom you cannot take the you can't take it with the place of wisdom you want to say yeah so i mean yeah it's um First of all, if you're working in a place, you need to find out what the guiding principles are, what the policies are. And it's important at this time to say that, particularly if you are a Christian, whenever you work in a place, even if it's a small place and it starts to grow, complexity starts to increase, yeah. you should know that there should be guiding policies. Big corporations, big organizations that have all these policies, there's a reason why. You know, it just helps everybody to be a bit more flexible, for everybody to to remove that element of somebody is trying to report someone. Yeah. Because I know companies where if you observe something, they've created a channel in which just observation, you must mention the observation. Yeah. If it yeah. is found that you saw it and you didn't, and you didn't mention it, it, they will, that's, you, you that's are liable. Trouble. That, yeah. As a matter of fact, that, that there, there's, there's, uh, there are you know, tests that everybody does from time to time and they paint a scenario. There are things that to test, okay, so you may have taken the course and you may have passed it. And then, like doing securities, they send a, a dot email, you know, something that should alert you and test that whether you will respond appropriately or not to make sure that everyone is res responding so it does not put anyone in a bad light. If you are in a position of authority, it's actually important that you protect people and you set out this so it, it makes your work, your, your workplace and your work environment safe for people, you know, because to be honest. You know, um, when you are reporting without evidence, it can create a problem. And then, of course, finding out you can put yourself into trouble as well. But that does not mean that you should permit what is oh, yeah. wrong, so to say. You, you can't, standing for righteousness does not always guarantee you that the outcome will be that you'll be celebrated. Oh, yeah. Don't, don't assume that you stand for righteousness and then you'll be celebrated. It may not turn out that no. way. You know, but you can, you can know that God has always got your back and God will promote you regardless of what, what might happen. So it's important that we bear, bear that in mind. But then um, always know the truth. And your, we, there was a scenario that we talked about once. I can't remember if it's in this, it wasn't this, um, in, it was in the previous one where someone was looking for money and we're talking about someone who left their, laptop, their computer open you know, on the, on the, on the table. Mm. You should also realize that if there's a network around you of people doing the wrong thing, they can actually rope you in. So there are certain workplace practices, and that's what we're talking about, workplace practices. If you get up from your computer, lock it. You know, don't, also don't open up yourself to be, you know, to be entangled in what is wrong. And by the time you start showing who you are, you don't engage in office polit office. Um, gossip Concept, and all yeah. that. He actually sets you apart and you just continue to pray that God will, you know, head you in with his, with his, by his mercy and you don't get into the, the evil that men do, <laughs> so to Very say. True. But it is important to stand for righteousness, for righteousness. whatever it is. But it, if there's a channel for reporting or for highlighting these things, it would, it would, um, it would be good. The other thing is that if you, as an individual, you know, what comes to your table 
you maintain this is how this is done. It, it would, if, if, it, if it's putting a stumbling block in an evil progressing, <laughs> eventually it will come to the, to, to the open. Yeah. Do your, what you need to do. You know, it's, that is very important. And, and uh, someone also mentioned, it, it also depends. So we're talking about this from someone that is not in a role or a position yeah. where it is required to report. So if you're an auditor, for instance, yeah. you don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. Something goes wrong. That is your job. You are expected to report. If you observe something as an H, as a as an HR person that is not right in an organization, then you're expected to yeah. report. It is part of your job. That yeah. is part of your responsibility. You know, so it's not up for debate. It, it's only oh, you are you are if if you are just an observer who does not have the pass to make certain correction, yeah. then then that's that's the situation that Susan so has that's, found okay, herself. So, that so Susan is not. She, she, she's she not can, in that position. She can ignore. Ignore. Yeah, so I don't think you should necessarily ignore. But at the same time, you should not accuse. You shouldn't accuse. So if you notice an irregularity, it could have been an error. Mm. And you let it pass. Don't... Many times, when we assume what is going on, we may be projecting our biases onto other people. True. You know? Whose table did this come from? Oh, I noticed this irregularity. You know, is there, is, you, you understand? You can flag it safely. Now, if there is a problem going on, then it becomes obvious. But you can flag it, and the easy thing, ask questions, oh, based, and oh, send yeah. an email. Send an email based on our discussion, notice irregularities. Send an email so that wisdom. Your, your wisdom, your conversation held. Absolutely. You know, and your position is documented, especially Absolutely. if you sense that there's, there's a foul play. But you cannot assume foul play in every situation. You know, we can assume that when something, there are some people playing, it might be your biases, that, that your own bias that you're projecting on other people. There's a way we ask, like, ah, if you don't do this, this person, of course, the person that wasn't invited ah, might be able to, no, that's, that's a bias. You don't know. Until you actually know, you don't know. No, no man after the flesh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the the other so just just so that we touch on the other aspect yeah. of this conversation is the aspect that has to do with is it ethical practices. for people to have private practices? Yeah. Um, uh, so where it is allowed, certain companies will say, you know what, let us know your business concerns that you have, mm -hmm. and you document it, and you know you you register it, you tell, you see exactly what the business is, who are the directors in the business. So that, and the only reason why companies do that is so that there's no conflict. So conflict they're telling interest, you yeah. there will, shouldn't be conflict of interest. So if that business private practice, you know in your heart that it will conflict with the business that I'm working for, then you need to put a check yeah, to it. You know, so you need to find out, so what exactly do I, am I doing? How will they conflict? Will it mean that there will be commingling? Yeah. You know, of you know the the customers of the I, business. Yeah, you know, are, are, are we are we? Is there going to be that conflict? Yeah. Um, is there going to be conflict in the in the terms of um, um, what you call it business um, business intelligence? Yes, yes. So will you be taking intelligence that yeah. Yeah. you know the business has gathered and applying it in your own business? Yeah. That may be an issue. You know, so you need to watch. You know, so where there can be that clear distinction, then it, it's okay. You know, to to proceed. Or where even if the businesses are related, you must declare yeah. in your business, this is what I am doing, you know, um, and, and let the company uh, guide and so that. And then you do not do that on the company time. Avoid using company resources. Absolutely. That's, that is, that, because that's, people are looking at you. Yeah. You know, you may not know. People are, and that's, that's part of what, you know, um, they want to see that, oh, this person is actually different from everybody because he has, he or she has a life of God himself. There was something we were saying earlier. If you have to rationalize a position, then there's something wrong. Yes. If you start to rationalize, oh, it's not my father's business, that is extremely Absolutely. wrong. If you start to think, if you, are, if you are wondering about it, once that question comes up, then you need to be mindful. You are probably doing something wrong. And it is, it is actually wrong in somebody else's business to say, I only work nine to five. No, once you're employed, you represent the brand and the image of that company. It goes beyond nine to five. In, in fairness, if you own a business, it goes beyond nine to five. And if you're shining as light, 
in that in what you do outside of some social clubs will delist you if you have if you misbehave somewhere Absolutely. else that has nothing to do with the club because you have an image you know you it doesn't and it's not a question of oh the, the, it doesn't pay well you took the job with the salary that he was paying so as christians we shouldn't be doing things like that but seek wisdom there's always make sure you are within the ambits of the law and don't contravene what your company um, um allows the issue is transparency is helpful if you can be transparent yeah. about it that's another thing that will guide you in doing the right thing so make sure that what you would not take what you would you would want in your business you wouldn't do you, you understand so it is very very important to find out the guidelines seek and then seek guidance from people who have gone ahead trusted Absolutely. people they will be able to tell you this is the way to go if it, if we think that god is asking you to do a business that is contrary and you need to move god will promote you don't 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 do these things like you know the people on the street let's let's behave like people in the kingdom yeah. we are kingdom people and we have resources that surpasses what human eye can see, see. it's a good place to end this yes, it so is. we can take you into the auditorium thank you for staying with us you're going to have an amazing week because you're going to hear an amazing word oh yeah Absolutely. <laughs> and we're going to be yeah. equipped with insights for living and we'll take you into the service now get up on your feet literally and let's worship god together welcome, welcome to church, to church.
ministering back to the Lord. Can you spend some time this morning and just minister to the Lord? Use your words and just begin to bless the name of Jesus. Begin to bless the name of Jesus this morning. He's good and his mercy endures forever. Spend some time this morning. Shut out all the noise and just begin to bless the name of Jesus. Speak to your soul this morning. My spirit, you will bless the Lord. Begin to minister to him this morning. Begin to minister to him this morning. He wants to hear your voice this morning. He wants to hear your voice this morning. Great is his faithfulness. Begin to bless the name of Jesus. And I will worship you with all of my heart. And I will worship you with all of my soul. And I will worship you with all of my strength. And you are my God. We have people here this morning. You, you want to make that declaration? You are my God. I am built to worship you. And I will worship you with all of my heart. And I will worship you. to the Lord this morning. Express yourself in worship. Express yourself in worship. Express yourself in worship. Express yourself in worship. Dead that would worship Him. 
must do so in spirit and in truth. Can you spend some time and just worship him this morning? I have no other God, only you. You are glorious, so glorious in your ways. You are glorious, so glorious in your ways. Just keep saying that, just keep saying that. You are glorious, so glorious. expression of God is his word that when the word of God comes into a man's life it doesn't matter what is going on on the outside and this is how we know he is powerful he is powerful in all of his ways for he has honored his word more than his name can you find expression this morning sing to him you are powerful you are glorious in all of your ways fearful in praises consistently doing wonders whatsoever a man says even in the place of threats we know that the word of God is all we need you are powerful so powerful Psalms 25 from verse 1 to 10. Psalms 25 from verse 1 to 10. Let's quickly express that this morning. Psalms 25. There is a word for someone here this morning. It is that you won't be defeated. I don't know who you are. There is a word for someone this morning. You will not be defeated. Want to go. To you, O Lord, I offer my prayer. Verse 2. In you, my God, I trust. Save me from shame of defeat. Don't let my enemies gloat over me. Verse 3. This is the word. Defeat does not come to those who trust in you, but to those who are quick to rebel against you. Is that you this morning? Is that you this morning? Can you rejoice over that word this morning? My trust is in you. Just say that. My trust is in you, O oh God. And I know I won't be defeated. Verse 4. Let's go. Teach me your ways, O oh Lord. Make them known to me. Verse 5. Teach me to live according to your truth. For you are my God who saves me. I always trust in you. Verse 6. Remember, O oh Lord, your kindness and constant love, which you have shown from long ago. Verse 7, forgive the sins and errors of my youth. In your constant love and goodness, remember me, Lord. Verse 8, because the Lord is righteous and good, 
he teaches sinners the path they should follow. Verse 9, he leads the humble in the right way and teaches them his will. Last verse, verse 10, with faithfulness and love, he leads all who keep his covenant and obey his command. Can you give him a shout of praise this morning? Give him a shout of praise this morning. We thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Can you put your hands together as we welcome the senior pastor of the Covenant Nation Global, Pastor Boju. Oye Mare. Amen. All right, all right. Let's, let's, let's be seated and make a confession. What's the song for rainy season is here? Isn't there any song? Rains are coming, rains are coming. Abby, what's the song we used to sing in primary school? No, 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 no. There's nothing you can't do. Rain has come. Okay, finish it. Rain and go away. Uh, finish that one. You know, <laughs> you are not little children. <laughs> I knew you would struggle with that part. <laughs> All right, let's make a confession this morning. As I sit to listen to the word of God today, a door of utterance has been opened unto me, and I hear the voice of God clearly speaking to me. This is the way to go, walk ye in it. I listen under the influence of the Spirit of God, and I'm not distracted by anything or anyone. The Word of God is food to my spirit. I am strengthened by it this morning. It is wine to my heart, creating joy within me. It is oil to my face, causing my life to shine, giving me victory in everything that I do. As my eyes make contact with the scriptures used in this message, the Spirit of God opens new things to me. He also brings to my remembrance things Jesus once showed me. I come to understand God's system on the earth, and I receive instruction, encouragement, correction, and the enablement to live out God's will. Amen. All right, this morning I want to speak on... Um, can you turn the volume? Maybe it's my monitors a bit down. All right. I want to speak on what I will um, call the subject of spiritual warfare. Let me put down the volume of my monitors, please. My own monitor. Spiritual warfare. Let's look at um, Psalm 149 and verse 6. Uh, we saw the scriptures last week. All right, Psalm 149, verse 6. Let the high praises of God be in thy mouth and a two edged sword in your hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, so execute upon them the judgment written, so execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all the saints, and then it says, praise ye the Lord. So the high praises of God in the mouth and the two-edged sword in the hand, well, Rich is in the mouth now, is to execute upon kings, principalities and powers, and demonic forces the judgment that is written. So first of all, we need to know there is judgment or a judgment that has been written in the word of God concerning anything that and everything that you might face on this earth. 
David referred to this when he said, It is written of me, O Lord, in the volume of this book, I come to do thy will, O Lord, O God. It is written. Now, a person who executes the judgment written is not the giver of the judgment, but the executor there of that judgment. In other words, if, let's say, people are occupying a person's house and he wants to, it's their inheritance, they want to remove them from the house, they go to the court and pray the court. And then the judge has a written judgment that is given and sealed. And then law enforcement officers go in to execute the judgment that is written. So our business is to execute the judgment that is written. And this is through high praises and the two-edged sword. We saw in Ephesians chapter 6, all right, and verse 17, it says, take the helmet of salvation, and this in the execution of this judgment, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the remor of God, which is the word of God, praying always with all types and manner of prayer, it says, and watching thereunto with all perseverance for the saints. So we have, uh, all right, two things that we use to execute this. And this is how we defeat the forces of darkness in every situation. It is our perfect weapon for total victory. And nothing supersedes high praises and the spoken word of God when it comes to spiritual warfare. There is nothing that ranks above praising God and speaking forth the word of God or the appropriate scriptures for that particular uh, situation there. These two things will always bring about and grant unto us victory in every and any situation. So I want to look at and take the first battle we have in scriptures, all right, that Israel ever engaged in. Uh, and the reason why I want to teach from this is that there is something called the law of first mention in uh, scriptures. It's a theological fact, which means that when something happens for the first time or is mentioned intentionally for the first time in scripture, it's not just a story, it's not just an occurrence, it's a blueprint out of which every other thing you will find the principles right in that first one. In other words, the first orange trees that were on the earth. It is out of the orange we have today, the orange trees we have today came out of the first ones. All human beings on the earth today came out of the first one. It's just like the scripture says that Levites were in the loins of Abraham, which means everything is in the loins of the first one. Uh, and that's why when they talk about the first miracle that Jesus did, gives us the pattern and the blueprint to miracles on the earth from Jesus. And Mary made it very clear. She said, when you are in any situation, whatsoever he tells you, just do it. In other words, if you are in any situation, all right, what you should just find is, Lord, I am in this situation, what will you have me to do? Leave the outcome to Jesus. Once you do what he says you should do, it will lead to unprecedented things. In other words, instead of you forming your own prayer, which means what you think God should do, 
and asking him to do what you think he should do. You just ask him, what will you have me to do? That's all I want. And if you simply do what God says you should do, that it will lead to miracles. If it's a situation where, you know, it can lead to a reversal of things, it will lead to an abundant things that you weren't even planning or things that you couldn't even have conceived. In other words, they toiled all night and caught nothing. Uh, they could have just have said, all right, look, we have to catch next time. Now, but if you go to God, God, we toiled all night and caught nothing. What will you have me do here? Next thing, Jesus shows up and says, this is what I will have you to do. Lend me your boat that I might go and preach. I don't think Peter felt at the back of his mind that giving his boat to Jesus at that point was going to lead to them catching an abundance of fish to the extent that their boats will begin to sink. But they did what Jesus said they should do. And it will always lead, all right, to having an abundance of the life of God in your own space there. So ask him instead of going, oh, my Lord, what now? do this, Lord. Just say, Lord, what will you have me do? And simply do that. So we see here, as a pattern here, that in Exodus chapter 17 and verse 8, that the Amalekites came to fight with Israel in Rephidim. And then the next verse, let's look at the blueprint here. There's so much in it. And then Moses said unto Joshua, Choose out men and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. And the Bible says, next verse, So Joshua did as Moses had said and fought Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hor went to the top of the hill and it came to pass, this was the experience, that when Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. And the hands of Moses were heavy, and so they took a stone and put it under him and sat thereon. Aaron and Hor stayed up his hand, one on one side, the other on the other side. And his hand was steady, until the going down of the sun. So it was steady for a period of time. And Joshua discomforted Amalek and his people with the edge of that sword. And in verse 14, the Lord said unto Moses, write this for a memorial, because this will be a pattern, all right, for victory in warfare. And rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar there and called the name of it Jehovah Nissi. And the Bible says, for he said, because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. So we have a name here that was revealed, Jehovah Nissi. Now the meaning of Jehovah Nissi is the Lord, all right, who is a banner over me, or the Lord my banner, banner over me. And as he lifted up the rod and said, Jehovah Nissi, that's how he called him, the Lord who is a banner over me. It also means mighty warrior as the second definition. And then the third definition is victory. Now, the banner there is like a flag that you hold over, all right, a person who holds over their head. You know, in warfare, you can wave a flag, a white flag, which means I have been defeated, therefore let us have peace through me surrendering unto you, and that's the white flag. You, the opposition, you have accomplished your purpose. I am now, all right, subject to your own will, 
and you know, uh, you have won. But here it is a banner here, a sign that is being raised there over your life there. You are waving a flag. Uh, and what God is saying here is that so long as that flag there is being over your head there, God says, I'm Jehovah Nisi, I will be a mighty warrior in your life. If that flag comes down, then I will stop fighting because it's a sign from you that you stop fighting and don't war on my behalf. If that flag is raised up there, then I go to battle for you. And what, all right, Moses understood where Jehovah Nisi was, when my hands were up, God was fighting and Joshua was winning with the edge of the sword. When my hands came down, he said, we were losing the battle. In other words, this is his name to humanity, that his name is Jehovah Nisi. If you want to win in life, make sure that flag is always when you are confronting issues is over, all right, your head. It is a sign, all right, to God, and he becomes a mighty warrior in your life, and victory will be certain. Now, let's understand this about God so we know who he is. Because, you know, sometimes we think that the love of God, all right, means that, you know, we don't have to keep to the world. God is just the love. He will, he will just show up, all right, and do things. In other words, you know, we, we just feel it's that way. Uh, and sometimes don't understand the specifics of God. That if we obey his instruction, we will experience him in an abundant measure. If we do not obey his instruction, we will not have his manifest presence within our lives. Let me give an example here. All right? Uh, when, when the children of Israel were coming out of Egypt, there was an instruction. Kill the lamb. Take the blood. Put it upon the lamp post there, upon the doorpost. When I see the blood, I will pass over that house. Any house I see the blood applied, I will pass over that house. Now, if you didn't apply the blood and you were a good uh, Jewish person, uh, but you just didn't apply the blood, right, then that Passover wasn't going to happen. And so the angel of death will access you, but you know, you, but you're a good Jew. You are a very nice person. You are a kind person. But it says, when I see the blood, this is the same thing Jehovah Nisi. When that banner is over, that flag is over your head, it says, I will fight for you. If that flag there is being waved, it means I have not surrendered. I am waving this flag here. And it's a sign in the realm of the spirit to God that, listen, fight for this individual, engage in this particular warfare, and God shows up as a mighty warrior, and he says, victory, therefore, is certain. What is this holding up of the hands? Because when the hands were up, it tells us that they won. When the hands came down, it tells us they began to lose. So when the hands were up, all right, the war was going on, God was fighting. When the hands were down, the enemy began to win. There was a withdrawal of God's presence there. Psalm 63 and verse 4 gives us a clue. It says, I will praise you as long as I live. In your name will I lift up my hands. So when we lift up our hands, is about praising God. You know, in Psalm 110, let me just quote this scripture here, and verse 1, it says this, all right? The Lord said unto my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Then the next verse, it says, the Lord shall send forth the rod of his strength. That's that rod there. Out rule thou in the midst 
of thine enemies. And then he goes on and says, thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. So he says, sit at my right hand. He will send forth the rod of his strength out of Zion, rule thou in the midst of my enemies. So he lifted up that rod there. And so long as his hands were lifted up in praise in that particular situation, they were winning. Once his hand came down and they were no longer praising, right, they started losing. Now the problem was, he says, sometimes we get weary. That's why he says, lift up, all right, your hand. He says, strengthen the feeble knees. And it talks about the hands that hang down, which means lift those hands up. Because if those hands get tired and the praise is not steady, over a period of time, then you don't have God fighting for you, all right, consistently until you arrive at the place of victory. And so what is this, all right, uh, what is the lifting of the hands? It is praise, which means God says, once I begin to hear praises coming forth over a particular person in their life, they are in a situation and I can hear that praise coming forth. What type of praise is, is it? It's the Bible tells us God causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. The word triumph doesn't mean to battle. The word triumph means to celebrate the victory that we already have in Christ Jesus. And so God is saying, if you are celebrating the victory that you have in Christ Jesus, I will go to war for you. If you lift up your hands and you are celebrating the victory that you have in Christ because of his blood that has been shed and because of the redemption you have in Christ, you are there with your steady hand lifted up. God says, I am the one who is going to fight for you. He is not telling us to fight, he is telling us to celebrate. Now, that's a form of warfare because what the enemy wants to do is to discourage you because you are celebrating the victory that you have in Christ Jesus in the midst of that particular situation that looks like a defeat, that looks like, you know, a setback, that looks you are celebrating the victory of Jesus Christ, you are rejoicing. And when he hears that sound of victory in the midst of it, that's somebody who is waving the flag. You know, when people, let's say they're in the sea and all of that, and, and they wave a flag, all right, a helicopter is coming, they're waving the flag to get the attention there. When you're on this earth and God looks and there are people waving, that Jehovah Nisi there, which means in the midst of it, they are shouting, we have the victory right here in Christ Jesus. They are waving that particular flag there. God goes to battle in the lives of those people to cause that victory to be made manifest in their lives. That's what Moses said. I've come to understand about the nature of God, so I called him Jehovah Nisi. In other words, he wants to see the flag of victory not the flag, not the white flag of defeat, but the flag there of victory. And many Christians are waving the flag of defeat, all right, from the things that they say about what's going on in the environment around them, right? They play the victim card. Uh, they play the card as, you know, as, as people that already have been defeated and, and, and as though they're in bondage to things. Uh, the Bible says, stand fast in the liberty wherein Christ has made you free and don't get entangled again in the yoke of bondage. In other words, you are rejoicing. You may have a condition in your life. It may look like you are in bondage to something, but he says, stand fast. The way you are going to get delivered, if you stand fast in the liberty where Christ has made you free, in other words, if you are rejoicing that I am free in Christ and Christ's death, burial, and resurrection has set me free from this particular thing, God says, I go to war, all right, to remove you and to deliver you from that particular thing. 
But if it's a mind that I'm going to struggle with this thing, then, then the enemy will defeat you. You stand fast. This is an understanding you must have. In the position that you have in Christ, over a period of time and you are steady, and he says God will go to war for you. In fact, verse 15 and 16, all right, of um, Exodus 17, let's put it up there, verse 15 and 16, when he says, and Moses built an altar and called it Jehovah Nisi, and then he says, because the Lord has sworn, all right, that I will have war with the Amalek from generation to generation. Literally, it means this is what Moses was saying. Indeed, my hand is lifted towards the Lord's throne. And as long as my hand is lifted up, I will have the victory. For the Lord will be at war. Provided my hands are lifted up in praise, God will be at war to cause that victory right there to materialize. And that's the covenant that God has with us. The Bible says in 1 John 5, 4, this is he that is born of God, whatsoever is born of God, overcometh the world. And he says this is the victory that overcomes. It's a victory, all right? It's the victory of Christ that overcomes the world, even our faith. This is our victory. Faith is the believer's voice of victory. It is voicing victory in the face of apparent defeat. It is a voice of victory in the face of apparent failure. It's a voice, all right, of the love of the Father in the face, all right, of being forsaken. It is the voice that God answers prayers when it looks like your prayer just went unanswered. Are you following what I'm saying here? It's the believer's voice of victory. It is that flag that is being waved, all right, over it. That God is working all things together for my good. It is that voice that comes out there. Once that person is waving that flag there, it says God is going to war in invisible ways there until the victory is made manifest. And Moses realized, because what happened if you see it? He says until the sun set, which means he will do it in the morning and put his hand down and do it again and put his hand down. It will took him just one day of steadily there, all right, with that voice of victory, and what was going up, let me read what I put here. It says, what happens on the hilltop determines the outcome in the valley. In other words, if those hands are not lifted up, even Joshua with the edge of the sword and the word of God, and he was there and pushing, will be defeated. If a Christian is not praising God, I want to say this here. If a Christian doesn't have that voice of victory, if a Christian doesn't make that joyful noise unto God, that sound is not coming out of their being. They will be defeated in life. If you see a Christian there that goes into mood swing and is out, listen, it's a sign that, look, God cannot fight on behalf of that person. They have tied the hands of God by reason, all right, of what's coming out of them. So God says, once a person begins to wave that flag there of victory, I will begin to go into battle to manifest it. For he told Jesus, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. In other words, Jesus, you've done the work. I am the one who is going to go to battle now. You sit there, I will go to battle. You be at rest, I will go to battle. And how is he going to do it? He says the rod of his strength shall come out of Zion there. He says, rule thou in the midst of his enemies. And we are the body. Christ is the head. So he has told us, sit, all right, until I make thine enemy. Same thing he told Jehoshaphat. You won't have to fight in this. I will do the fighting for you. He said, stand still and you shall see the salvation of the Lord. And the interpretation there was Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat began to praise God. And as Jehoshaphat began to praise God, God went into battle. The Bible says, and when they began to sing and to praise, the Bible says the Lord set ambushment. In other words, once they started waving that flag of victory, the Lord set, all right, set ambushment against the children of Ammon. So he's waiting for that victory flag there. 
He's waiting for you in the midst of everything to start waving the flag, which means that you cannot pay the bills. What you are earning is almost 50% of what you need, but you are waving the flag of abundance. Are you following what I'm saying here? You are waving the flag of God that supplies all of my needs according to his riches and glory. You are waving the flag here to God. It is not an issue of saying, God, you know, if you do all of these things, you will see what place is. Eh? God, you just give me the abundance. You will know what it means to dance. That's 419. Do you get what I'm saying here? What God is saying is, you dance as though everything is done. Then you will see what I will do in this situation here. Yeah. It is not that I will wait for you. Do you get what I'm saying? Or you will wait for me to do it. It is the reverse. You will do it here yeah, and give an advance fee. Do you get what I'm saying here? Yeah? And then you will know that I will match that sacrifice of praise there with an abundance inside your life. Are you following what I'm saying here? Because it's our position in Christ that becomes the condition of our lives. You get what I'm saying? So a person must be rejoicing. And God says once, and I want to show this here, that's Giovanni. Say. Once I begin to hear that sound, he says I go to battle for that individual. Now, a person can get so heat. And that's what John was saying. They that observe lying vanity said will forsake that mercy. But I will sacrifice. Look, he had, he was in the belly of the fish. With all the liquid all over him, in the belly of the fish. When Jehoshaphat began to thank God as one who was walking on the land as a free man, he was wrapped around there when Jehoshaphat, and the minute Jehoshaphat began to wave that flag, God showed up on that particular scene here. All right? God showed up, all right, right there on the scene. So let's look at some examples here. Isaiah 42 and verse 12. Isaiah 42 and verse 12. It tells us in Isaiah 42, 12, let them give glory unto the Lord and declare his praise in the islands. Now, once that happened, the Lord shall go forth. That's the banner. The Lord shall now go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He becomes a warrior. And he shall cry and roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. Then he said in the next verse, I have long time held my peace. And the reason why I held my peace was that that sign wasn't there. I have been still. I have refrained myself. Now I will cry as a traveling woman. And I will destroy and devour at once. Once the praise begins. Look at Psalm 81 from verse 1, Psalm 81, this is the Jehovah Nisi. Sing aloud unto the Lord our strength. Make a joyful noise to the God of Jacob. The noise must be joyful. Take a psalm, bring hither the timbrel, the pleasant harp with the psaltery. Blow the trumpet in the new moon, in the time appointed on a solemn feast day. For this was a statute for Israel and a law of the God of Jacob. This he ordained in Joseph for a testimony when he went through a land of Egypt where he had a language I understood not. He said, I removed, which means his hands, his shoulder, there was a burden on his shoulder and his hands were in the pots. Pots, that means back then when they want to, they take you to jail and, and they chain you, your hands are chained, you, you are stuck here. They'll put your feet, and this how, in that state here, they put your hand back here and it's locked. And in that, you know how difficult that condition is? And in that condition, he says, I removed. Why did I do that? Because I heard a joyful noise when he was chained. Do you get what I'm saying here? I heard the psalm come up to me while he was chained. I heard, heard him blow the trumpet. What in the world make him blow the trumpet? And a solemn voice. He says, I delivered, I removed the body from his shoulders. I delivered, put it back there, all right, here from the pot. Verse 7, it says, thou callest, you were in trouble, and you called, but you were waving that flag. And I delivered thee. I answered thee in the secret place of thunder. I proved thee by the waters of Meribah. He said, Hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee, O Israel, if you will hearken unto me. He says, There shall no strange God be in thee, 
Neither shall thou worship any strange God. You will never, all right, in any situation, all right, go out there and, and be looking if without this person's help or without this, I can't. No, 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 no. There will be no strange God in you. Nothing like that. You will know that, listen, my trust is in you. I hope only in the mercy of God. It is only in God I put my trust there. This thing will come to pass, all right, because I have held on to Jesus Christ. Nobody on this earth, absolutely nobody on this earth is, all right, bound and will carry the burden of, of having to help me by force. If anybody will help me here, and God will use people, it will be of their own free will. It will be that they do it rejoice. It's not, it's not, I will make no demand on any human soul or anybody, institution here in this. He says there will be no strange God in thee here. Look at what he says there, next verse. It says, open, my people will not hearken to my voice, nor Israel will have none of me. So I gave them up to their own lust. Next verse now. All right. So I gave them up to their own hearts lost, and they walked in their own counsel. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. He said, I will soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. And what was that? The joyful noise, the sound of victory, the praise in the midst of it. It says, if that was coming forth, then the judgment that was written will easily have been executed. I, I believe that that's what David was saying. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. When did God incline? He says he put a new song. The secret was when I began to praise him, and I began, then that God moved into that particular situation there. God is not going to get you into praise because he did something for you. It is you that enter into praise for another reason, which is called faith. Then some, do you get what I'm saying here? Something happens. If you commit yourself to mood swings, that is, God forbid, exactly how your life will be forever until you come into the place of praise. You will be hoping for something to happen until you step in and say, it is done already. Are you following what I'm saying here? And then you lift up the hand and begin to rejoice. And then God shows up in that particular situation there. So he goes to war. That's why in Isaiah 49 and verse 2 here, it tells us that why will people not praise because of lying vanities? Isaiah 49 verse 12, sorry. It says, sing, all right? Sorry, verse 13. Sorry. It says, sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth. Break forth into singing, O mountains, for the Lord hath comforted. So that's why you're singing, because he has comforted you there, right? Even though it doesn't look like that, okay? His people and will have mercy upon his afflicted. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken, when God was asking them to sing, was when, when they looked at it, they said, God, you have forsaken me. You actually abandoned me. And you have forgotten about me. And God says, can a woman forget her sucking child? Don't you see there's something wrong? Uh, don't you see that, they, you know, I heard somebody say this. What was it? He said, when Jesus came, he said, I have, and that had never happened. He said, I have come to reveal the Father to humanity. Which means I've come to reveal God as a Father to humanity. Our business is to reveal the fatherly love of God. Do you get what I'm saying here? To show what God will do as a father to his children. We are to reveal, and that's what Satan is attacking. He says, you've got to understand this. I can never forsake you. So what is wrong? He says, I have engraven you upon the palms of my hands. And your walls are continuously before me. So he says, so what is wrong? He said, what is wrong is that you don't get it. You have to wave that flag of victory. You have to rejoice for that thing to happen. You have to sing. He says, no. He says, when well, we're praying, we're asking. He said, it is not praying that starts the movement. It is the song that starts the movement. Do you get what I'm saying here? It is you rejoicing that starts the movement there. Uh, look, they came to fight with, with Israel at Rephidim. 
Referendum means something. You know, when you, when you are looking into scriptures, uh, words unlock the meaning of scriptures. So when they say that uh, the day um, Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Okay? So when they use names, it's important sometimes, you check. That's why, that, that's why uh, Abigail will say, Neban is his name, which means if you unlock that word, that's why you had to, they had to call him Jesus because that name told us who he really was. So when you see a name in scripture there, if you really want to study, do exegesis there, check the meaning of that name. And they came to fight at Rephidim. The meaning of Rephidim means a place of rest. In other words, they came and Israel was in a place, had to be in a place of rest. That is, sit down at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. So it's a place of rest. It's, rest doesn't mean you are not doing anything. But rest means that you are resting on something, all right, to bring about the victory in that situation. So God says, I've engraven you upon the palms of my hands. Your walls are continuously before me there. It is there, continuously there. God says, look, give me a chance. Just give me a chance for a period of time to show you that I'm more intelligent than you. To show you that I'm capable of working all things together for your good. Do you get what I'm saying here? That life will not go as you planned because you are not God. You don't control the universe. He controls it. He says, test me on this issue here. So I will show you who I am and the love that I have, all right, for you as a person there. So they said, God has forsaken. God said, I didn't forsake. He said, I didn't forsake. He said, you are he said, I didn't forget. It is impossible for me to forget. So what is wrong? He said, you are not singing. All right, but because you think singing has to do with when God does something, then I will go there and I'll be singing to you. He said, that's, that's not what we're saying. It is a sacrifice of praise. It, it is the fruit of your lips giving thanks unto my name, all right, before anything happens. It's a sound coming out of you. That is the way and manner in which the covenant works. Right? It, that's because God is a spirit. He looks at everything in the realm of spirit. He says, and you are a spirit. That's how you ought to respond to him. Now, look at, because of time, just look at the consequence when you start praising. Verse 20. He says this in verse 20. He says that, all right, verse 20, Isaiah 49. The children which thou shall have, which means the things you are going to have, after you have lost the other. God says, we agree, you lost certain things. Right? When, when the warfare was going against you. He says, shall say in thine ears, this place, they would say it, is too straight or too narrow. All right? Give place to me that I may dwell. And then your response will be, you would say in your heart, who hath begotten me this? When I lost my children and I was desolate, captive, removing to and fro, who hath brought up these? Behold, I was left alone. Alone. These, where had they been? And then God says, Behold, I will lift up my hand. And this is what he's saying here. All right, as you lift up your hands to God, God lifts up his hand on your behalf here. I mean, somebody says, look, he's saying that, I don't know why I lost my job. If God, I've been faithful to God. If God lifts up his hand on this earth and draws a job to you, you will cost the one you were doing before. Do you get what I'm saying here? If you let him, if you lift up his hand there, it says, I will lift up my hand to the Gentiles and a standard, put the scripture to the people, and they shall bring thy sons and daughters upon thy arms and upon thy shoulders. And then in verse 24, because of time it says, shall the prey be taken from the mighty? Shall the lawful captive be delivered? It says, you're even a lawful captive. You have now been held prey by the mighty. It says, yes, next verse, but thus said the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend. It says, with them that contend with you and I will save. So that saving, not what you were seeing there, that who had begotten me there, was because God went to war on behalf of that person and the results or the spoils of war of his victory was what now surrounded them there. So he will go to war where his praise, all right, is offered up. And so in conclusion, 
The issue therefore becomes people's hands, after some time, people get, can get tired. And it's real. Because, you know, Satan knows that so long as those hands are up, so long as those hands are up, it is impossible for us to win in the life of this person. So long as the hands are up, God will be fighting over the life of this person. So long as those hands are up here, I'm not talking about saying, okay, I found the key, I will praise God for two hours tomorrow and then everything will be resolved. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that it's a lifelong commitment, which means he's not asking you to start doing two hours here, that every day if it's going to be 15 minutes, I'll be consistent with this. I will lift up that banner over my life and be consistent, all right, with this particular thing here. And God will be fighting, all right, over my life here. So he understands that, you know, you can, people get you, and that's what Satan is attacking. He says, if I can just stop that joyful noise, then I don't have to do too much. I got them. If I can stop it and make them go on, out of God and they are no longer abiding in him and they are now trying to produce it by themselves, then I got them now. So how does he attack that? And it's real. It's, it's warfare. If a person here, you know, starts praising God and, and warfare is, uh, you know, it's, there are arrows that have, are being fired. And nobody knows when arrows, all right, are being fired. So let's assume that somebody um, is diagnosed with a condition. And they say, well, you have two more years or 18 months to leave. And the person looks at it and says, okay. They start praising God. And then they switch on the TV and they bring a doctor on TV. I say they're watching even a foreign thing. Someone that has no knowledge of them and the person says, well, you know, I have patients and, um, you know, 80% of them that have this condition uh, die within six, oh my goodness. Now the person is having a discussion, scientific discussion. That's an arrow, which we were not expecting. Now as you finish that arrow, you know, everybody's still talking, laughing. You are now quiet. As you finish that, as you are going, you say, okay, let me go to a Christian station. And as you turn the Christian station, you met somebody and said, you know, my, my, my sister just died from the, oh God. <laughs> and this is a powerful Christian. So you now look, oh God, <clears throat> oh God. Are you from Zania? I mean, I mean, now that it's, it's, it's coming down, so we can use that as an example. So it's not an arrow. If, we, if, we, if it was where it was going up, it would be an arrow. But now that it's coming down, it's not an arrow again. Okay? So let's assume you wanted to buy something. And they gave you a budget when it was um, um, 400, let's say 500 naira to a, a dollar. So let's assume the thing costs one million dollars. So that's 500 million. So, ah, said, Lord God, I thank you. It went to 750. Lord God, 1,000. Lord, one, two. Are you following me saying here? The Bible says when Peter saw that the wind was what? Boisterous. The intensity of the wind got to him something leaked and you could almost say that he was walking on water when he was praising God all right because that's how you walk on water now and he was praising God he was doing the impossible and then he saw that and it attacked so Satan is using things that's why Jonah said they that observe lying vanities all right they will stop that praise there because of what's happening and then it goes up so you can see people saying, ah, they've told the children we'll be going for summer holiday. I remember, and they look at it, 750, we calculate, we still can go. 1,000, uh, you know, I told you we are going to Athens, but my point was that the city starts with A. <laughs> so it's Accra we're now going to. <laughs> All right, because the thing pondered, and then you look at that, and then it goes up again. You say, well, hey, is that better good now? Because able to get to a crisis problem and all of that. And so it begins to, 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 ah. Uh, so it's real. So you can start out 
excited with a faith. That's why the Bible says your faith groweth exceedingly. With a faith level, but that faith level can't handle two weeks down the line. Uh, are you following what I'm saying here? They, the attack begins to all right come there. It can't handle there. Two weeks down the line there. It can't, you know, it, it can't. So people begin. I mean, I mean, people begin. After some time, people start cutting down on things because, all right, of that. So how do you get that faith where you are still full of rejoicing? Now, the secret is, how does faith come in the first place? The Bible says faith cometh by hearing, and hearing appropriate scriptures for the situation you are faced with. So it comes by hearing, and hearing the realm of God. So if you hear an appropriate scripture that fits your situation, faith is going to come. No matter what is happening on the outside, if you hear an appropriate scripture that fits your situation, faith will come alive on the inside of you. Now, that scripture can be spoken by somebody else to you, or it can be spoken by you to your own self here, right? Now, the reason why you should learn to speak remarks to your own self there is because you can't wait on anybody or else if your issue now becomes the man by the pool who says, I have no man to push me. But so, so you should come to the place where you ought to be a teacher your own self. In other words, not only do you have remas for yourself, you also are now giving other people appropriate scriptures for the conditions that they are in their life. You have it in you in an abundant measure on the inner side of you. But you need it, all right, to hear it. And let's look at what this rema is because it is a freshly spoken word. In other words, it is something that is freshly because it has to be fresh as you are facing things. And we all know this. You can, many people have, have, we have what is, you have abandoned projects. There are many abandoned faith projects. And what caused the abandonment there, which means they didn't come, as they went into it, after some time, the pressure got so much that life was better giving up that project than still holding on to it. Because holding on to it now had become a burden. Just letting go of the thing and say, look, I will live without this particular thing. Now it's a kind of relief, all right, to them inside their heart. Now let's look at what this rema is because it produces faith, all right? In Acts chapter 14, always comes by hearing. Verse 9, a man was born crippled from his mother's womb. All that happened was that he heard, faith comes by hearing, he heard Paul preach. And steadfastly, Paul steadfastly beholding him, perceived that he had faith, which means at that point, because of what he heard, somebody who had never walked, at that moment, he just believed that the impossible can be done and I can walk. I'm telling you that if you hear the appropriate scriptures, nothing is impossible to you. You understand it? The woman with the issue of blood, how did she get herself to that point? Mark 5, the Bible verse 25, she had spent all that she had. 12 years, verse 26, and, and of many physicians, spent all she had, nothing better, but rather grew worse. How did the change come? When she heard of Jesus, she heard something that she just said, if I would touch the helm of his garment, I, all right, shall be made whole. So you have to hear, and it comes by hearing, present, continuous tense. In other words, there has to be a freshly spoken word that is fresh in your consciousness, right? So that you have enough to move on for your path is as a light that shineth brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. In fact, when Mary went to, to, when the angel came to Mary, and Mary said, how shall these things be? He said, with God, nothing shall be impossible in Luke chapter 1 and verse 37. That with God, nothing shall be impossible, all right? Nothing is two words. No thing shall be impossible. That's for with God, no thing shall be impossible. Now, you can check it if you have a Greek, all right, anything. You'll find that the word thing there, all right, it's no thing. That word thing is rema. In other words, the angel said, with God, all right, no rema, all right, which means the word impossible means void of power. With God, no rema is void void of power. In other words, with God, all right, no remma there, right, cannot produce. So he was, he was telling Mary that, look, it is in the power of that spoken word. That's how it happens. 
Now, a rema is a freshly spoken word. And what do we mean by this? And I'll close with it. The first time we get the concept of rema was in Exodus, when the Bible says, that's what Jesus quoted, right? When he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And what had happened in Exodus chapter 16, and God told them in Deuteronomy, he said, I gave you manna, all right, that man shall not lead. You might know that man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word. In Exodus 16 and verse 15, it tells us about this manna when it came the first time, Exodus 16. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said, what is this? They said, it's manna. For they didn't know what it was. So they called it manna means, what is this? That's the meaning of manna in Hebrew. What is this? So what they say, what is this? So they just called it manna. What is this? What is this? All right. And Moses said to them, this is the bread, all right, which the Lord had given to you to eat. And then he now goes on, and this is the thing which he has commanded. Now, because of time, let's go to verse 20. And he says this, verse 20, notwithstanding, or verse 19, he says, this was the commandment. And Moses said, let no man leave it till morning. Okay, notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto Moses, but some of them left it until morning, and it bred worms and stank. And Moses was wroth with them. And verse 21, and they gathered it every morning according to every man's eating. In other words, that manna had to come fresh every morning. All right, bread is bread, but there's a difference between freshly baked bread and stale bread. If I keep bread for, for a week and it's stale, all right, it's, in fact, it's bread worms, which means it is almost eating spoiled bread. Do you get what I'm saying here? That's the condition. But there's something called freshly baked bread. That's why Jesus said this is a major prayer point. They said, how do we pray? He said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. The bread is a daily bread. Give us this day, our, it is a daily bread there. So if you let it, you can't use yesterday's revelation for today's challenges. Are you following? Now, this is why people get defeated. Because as the thing is fluctuating, it affects the faith. Because it is, give us this day, our daily bread. So if I'm being fed every day, if I'm getting this manna every day, this remas here every day, I will overcome. That's what I was telling Mary. You will be fresh. This spoken word of God, nothing will be impossible unto you. He says, that's all. Now, what do you mean by this fresh bread here? Look at Lamentations chapter 3. And go to more scripture and we close. Verse 22. It says, this is what he says. It says, and you understand the scripture very well. It says, Lamentations 3. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not. The next verse, it says, they are new. That's his mercies, his compassion. And new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. So, so they, are, they are new. He renews it every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. What is he renewing? Isaiah 50 and verse 4. The prophet said, morning by morning. Isaiah 50 verse 4. The Lord has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season. That's a rema. A word what? In season to him that is weary. In other words, anybody who is weary, if they hear what God is saying at that particular moment from them, energy comes back into their mind. So those that wait upon the Lord, when they're weary there, their strength is what? Renewed, which means they come out. You saw that the, the fire, they just come out and say, that person with that diagnosis, that thing, tell you, I've told you I'm healed. In fact, they are saying I'm healed. Now they'll tell you, in six weeks time, I'll be running around doing everything because their strength has been renewed. They've heard a fresh word that has broken everything that gave them reason to doubt. Look at what it says here. It says, he waketh my ear morning by morning. He wakeneth my ear to hear as the word led it. In other words, in this journey here, you are praising God and the way you sustain that praise is that morning by morning, he opens my ear. We have to go back to the foundational principle. Let me say this to you so that you do not live a disappointed Christian life. Read your Bible and pray every day if you want to grow. 
there is no shortcut to reality. Don't let anybody deceive you. You have to read your Bible and pray every day. It is as simple as that. You pray, you open the word, some fresh insight comes. You speak it, it's sufficient for any attack Satan will bring. You pray again, you read your Bible, sufficient light for any attack. That's what Jesus says. He says sufficient is the evil for the day. Any attack he throws, you are buoyant because you have life on the inside of you. You pray, you open the word of God, you see stuff there, you, it excites you, you rejoice, you give God praise, you are worshiping him. Like we said the confession last week, when you get to that point in your confession, you speak for those fresh manners. There, you are full there, and you start praising him. As long as you're praising him, you're making that advancement there. And he says you just have to do that for a while. He says after a little while, after a short time, he will subdue the enemy underneath your feet. But he has to hear that praise. And Satan, I am telling you, will attack that praise. If you say, well, I've learned praise, you will praise him the first day. You will praise him the second day. By the third day, if Satan knows that the reaction is coming, he starts shooting at you. That listen, get those hands down. Get those hands down. Because if this guy's hands and this lady's hands are still up, we have no chance. The Bible says that God, out of the mouth of babes and stock sucklings, he has ordained praise. To do what? To steal the enemy. And to do what? To stop the avenger. Satan cannot move where praise is going on. Do you get what I'm saying here? Once a person is praising God, Satan cannot, he, he, he is paralyzed. He just cannot move. And, and, and I heard Roy Higgs say this. I'm going to go and really study before I preach it. He said, Jesus said, I have given you the keys of the kingdom. If I take this thing, I said, I have given this to you, and you take it. In whose possession is it? You. He doesn't have it again. In other words, and whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound. In other words, if anything happens, it's because you allowed it. It's no longer God. The keys have been given to you. So don't come and blame God. That, God, why did you let this happen? It's you that allowed it to happen. In fact, God is blaming you. God says, what's your problem? What's your problem? Ch Novel here said he was praying to God. His daughter had skin, all sorts on her skin. He was praying to God. God, he said, Jesus in an open vision came to him. Rebuke that thing off her body. I said, rebuke it. Why are you not allowing it? He said he stood in his room and started rebuking it, rebuking it. He said he was still rebuking when his daughter ran into the room. See, my skin is fresh. He was living with that thing, hoping that God would do something when God was waiting for him to do something. In other words, well, am I prosper before I'm this? You say with your mouth, before I am this age, I will be at this particular place. God says, now we are in what? Business. Any bad thing that happened, we allowed it. If you've given people keys, you, what you've given. So if I give you a car and I come and say, look, I want you to, ah, Oga, should you give me the car? I have given you the keys. The keys are now in the hands of the church. Whatsoever you bind and whatsoever you lose. Do you get what I'm saying here? The power to bind, that's to stop, and the power to release is in the hands of God's people. Whether they use it or not, is they are now their own, their own society. Do you get what I'm saying here? So this beggarly attitude of God, when are you going to come and do stuff for me? God, when are you going to come and do stuff for me? God, when I'm going to... I mean, I, I, mean, I went to the ark. As the architect, I said, so, so when are you finishing this? I said, we'll finish this in a few months. Few months. But that's how people that get results do it. Are you following what I'm saying? And don't come out and say, well, they have all the money in this world. They have all the money in this world. That's why they're doing it. When I do have money, I will do anything I want to do. Let me tell you this. One time I told Bishop, I said, I want to start a construction, which I have said will start. I will announce it formally in Wolfbeck. He said, all right, start. Then he dropped the phone. Then called me back. I hope you know, when you start building, you don't build with money. None of us had the money when we started. Do you get what I'm saying here? You think God is not older than you? I say, God, when you give me the money, I will dance. I will roll on the floor. Yeah. 
is God you want to? How many has he given that they will forget? You will say, I will roll on the floor. I will turn on the floor. I will move. I will look at this one. <laughs> I was, it's today that I was born. I will roll. I will shake. I will roll. God, if you bless me, ah, the kingdom will know that somebody is a billionaire. Touch me, Lord. I will touch your kingdom. I said, this one. <laughs> How many have we touched? That, not that they didn't touch us back. They left. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> And the more spiritual you seem to have, be, the less likely you will show gratitude. Do you get what I'm saying? It, that's why it is, it is the person who was almost a prostitute that showed gratitude. That's why Jesus said, to the person who is forgiven much, they love much. You that feel you are righteous, you will think all your service in the kingdom end you the thing. See, that's why there were 10 lepers. It is only the one who wasn't a Jew that came back to thank God. The longer you are in this thing, the less likely you will have a heart of gratitude. You begin to develop entitlement. Do you get what I'm saying here? So don't, uh, you can't do for one now with God, okay? If, if God says, don't tell me if I do it because I've already done it. So the question of if I do it is not there. I have already what? Done it. Now you respond to what I've done. And then we get into the next part, which means what I've done will now be made manifest in your life. So is that voice of victory? And understand this, we agree, that thing may be attacked, but if you keep yourself in tune with the word of God, there will always be energy to praise God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. And by the power of the Spirit, I ask you, establish us in this truth. If anybody is right under the sound of my voice, in this auditorium or online, who is facing something critical at this moment, I declare into your life, before this week runs out, the judgment written concerning it, your ears will hear it. It shall bring joy to your heart. That light will grow every day on the inside of you. And as the revelation grows, so your praise will become stronger. And that situation, God will do exceedingly abundantly above anything that you asked or above anything that you imagined. And you will say shortly, who hath begotten me all this in my life? In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Right, God bless you all. Okay, uh, quickly, um, um, platform will be on the 1st of May. I just want to quickly say something because we have a way um, we are doing it um, this year. And what happened is in 2009 was the last time we ever did platform as just a, a fiscal event. It was from 2010 we started going on television. And we had evolved it. I, I mean, I mean, God, God, you know, I mean, when I even think about how we arrived at this without knowing the theory of it, it must just have been the Holy Ghost. All right? So we believe firmly in ministering to people according to homogeneous groups. Okay? Homogeneous groups means if you put people, all right, they are, they are more likely to, if you put people into their homogeneous groups, like minds together, they, it's a more effective way of ministering to people. So we used to have in 20, 2009, I remember in TBS, we had um, different tents. So we had tents here. And people came in, and you register whether you're going for summit one, two, three, four, five. And when you get it, they say that's summit one, this summit two, summit three, summit four, summit five here. All right. In fact, I just was in a conversation with the person who built, he's a church member, he's a minister in church, but he lives in England now, who built the program. I said, I want that program again. He said, no problem about that. We'll just uh, revamp it. All right. So, you register and you go to each, so you, you, depending on what you want. And I, there was even a particular section and uh, that I'm, in my entire life. I sat down there. It had to do with uh, legal stuff for business and all of that. And that's the first time the former vice president, uh, His Excellency, Professor Yomish ever came for platform. He was in TBS, he just walked in, and I remember with a jacket. I mean, he wasn't VP that time, that's 20, 2009. And he taught. And it is in that place that I heard him say that if you take a certain amount of money in cash 
and you give it to somebody, it's actually illegal if you look at the legality of things. You won't know. You know, if they want to catch you, they will catch you on what you even thought you were doing, which was goodwill. And it's the first time also Professor Mogalo also spoke. All right, he was speaking, he was deputy governor of CBN at that time. He came to and spoke. So you register whichever one. So when we went on television, it became a central program. And um, I remember somebody saw me on Virgin Atlantic. He came, he said, Pastor, what you said, right. He told me about this in 2014. He said, he said, why do you invite people to teach on business and they digress into other things? I said, it's the pressure of television. You know, they believe they are speaking to people, the whole Nigeria. So friends may tell you, please make sure you chip in a word for your business. I see that I know people may be marketing themselves at some point. All right. In fact, there was somebody, well, let me leave it. All right. Marketing at some point. I was in the green room there. Somebody had their notes. Notes are ready to speak. And he put earphone and somebody else was dictating to him what he should speak. He put that aside, changed what he was going to say and came up here and did that. So I know there's pressure of television. So he told me, he said, cut the television off. He said, we will come and listen. Ah, you know, you, you said struggle. That, that, you know, people will say, God has left you. Do you, you know what I'm so yeah, maybe they don't have money again. Uh, you know, these things. And you'll be jumping, jumping, jumping. Their money has finished. So you're in between stuff. So, but we decided this time we will go back, all right, to what we, what we used to do in terms of summit. And so May 1st is about which was the first one we did, is about building, well, it's about working. So it's Labor Day, how to be more productive at work. So we've divided work into different types. So there's entrepreneurship, which are people that are building a business from scratch. And so that's the theme of that one, how to build a business from scratch. And that one will hold here, all right? And we have five people who have built businesses in this country from scratch. And they will tell you the story there, all right, and how they built it to that point. One of them started in Lagos, but his business is now in Dubai, so he's coming in from United Arab Emirates, all right, and he will teach on how he built his business to that global brand. Okay, then the number two we'll have at Lekki Center, it is women in business and women in tech, okay, and we have uh, two of the most Powerful, probably powerful women in business who have built businesses in this country, all right, and then um, also women who are in tech or tech-related people, okay? That's for women, okay, because we believe that that's for women. So those who attend the place should be people who are born as women. You won't believe that there's something, you know, this life, there's something we wanted to do in England and somewhere. And the authorities, the people in charge said, we've checked all of your speakers. And one of them made derogatory remarks about LGBT. It's interesting. We can't allow you to use our facility. It's interesting what the world is turning to. Okay? And the person signed as has and she. You know the meaning of that. <laughs> so if you are born a woman, okay? All right, okay. <laughs> and then the last one is for those entrepreneurship, which means you are, in, you, are in, you are inside the corporation and you are building products and services, all right, within that corporation to create wealth. So it's for middle and senior managers, and that will be at Marriott in, all right, Ikeja there. So it's specific, all right, and targeted. So you choose which one. You can't attend three, you can't attend two, because it's at the same time, okay? And you say, ah, how can you make it the same time? How can you make it the same time? You know, on television, when you go to TV now, five matches are at the same time. And they don't stop. Those who are telling the news are saying breaking news at the same time. Those doing movie are doing movie at the same time. So we will know your true interest, whether you are sports, whether you are spiritual, whether you are musical, 
you will show who you are. So you will choose. Okay, so if you're a man, it has to be between entrepreneurs. God bless you all. Shall we stand up to our feet? Let's begin to thank God and put to practice what we've heard. The entrance of the word of God is what brings light understanding to our hearts. Can you spend some time and just begin to thank him this morning? Lift up your voice and begin to thank him. Morning by morning, he causes our ears to be opened. That the mercies of God are new every morning. Just begin to thank him. Show gratitude unto the Lord this morning concerning those specific areas of your life. Lift up your voice and just begin to thank Him that the mercies of God are new every morning. Thank Him for the entrance of His word. I will offer the sacrifice of my praise, giving Him praise and giving Him glory. Concerning the works of your hands, relationships, begin to thank Him. Begin to thank Him. The Lord is bringing clarity unto you today by reason of thanksgiving. Offer Him the sacrifice of your praise with thanksgiving stemming out of your heart. Be deliberate about giving Him thanks. Just begin to thank Him. Father, we give you praise and we give you glory. We thank you. You only do good. We thank you for your mercies are new. Lord, we thank you. We bless your name. We lift you high. You are worthy of our praise and you are worthy to be praised. All the glory, all the honor be unto him. The gates are your gates are continually open. Your gates will be called praise. Just open the gates of your heart and let those words stem out of your being. Giving Him praise and giving Him glory. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Deuteronomy chapter 20 from verse 1 to 4. I've got good news for you this morning. Deuteronomy chapter 20 from verse 1 to 4. There is a word for someone this morning and I want you to rejoice at this word. It says, when, no, yes. It says, when you go out to fight against your enemies and you see chariots and horses and an army that outnumber yours. Come on now. When you see an army and chariots that, now this is in actual fact, these people are way more than you. It says, do not be afraid of them. It says, the Lord your God who rescued you from every challenge that you have ever faced will be with you. Can we rejoice and begin to give him thanks for this word? Can you rejoice and begin to give him thanks? That when you go out this week, this will be your final outcome. When you go out this week, that when things overwhelm you, understand this, that your victory is already bought. Give him thanks this morning. Give him praise. Can you just give him thanks this morning? This is your final outcome this week. That when you go, even for that interview, for that situation, that this is your final outcome. Give him praise. In Jesus' name. Verse 2. Let's go. Deuteronomy 20 verse 2. It says, before you start fighting, before you engage, a priest is to come forward and say to the army, what is he saying? Verse 3, men of TCA and Igomo, today you are going into battle. Do not be afraid of your enemies or lose courage or do what? Calm down. Say to your neighbor, calm down. Verse 4, what did he say? He says, the Lord your God is going with you. And what's going to happen? What is going to happen? If you know that you have the victory this morning, can you rejoice in the word of the Lord this morning? If you know that your victory is secured, can you begin to rejoice? Begin to rejoice, begin to rejoice. 
Give him praise and give him glory. Begin to rejoice for that victory. Begin to rejoice for that victory. Begin to rejoice for that victory. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, can you lift up your hands this morning? And so, Father, we decree and we declare that as we step out in the course of this week, our victory is assured in you in the name of Jesus Christ. We believe that our lives will be that fragrance that you will spread across the entire earth and it will resound in praise of your holy name in the name of Jesus Christ. And so I declare over your life that your going out is indeed blessed. Amen. That your coming in is blessed. Amen. I decree and I declare that the mountains and the hills, they are breaking forth into singing on your behalf. Amen. The trees of the field are clapping their hands in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I decree over you, if you have any form of ailment in your body, you will not need the doctor to declare you free. You are now free in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree over you, over the works of your hands, over your businesses and your career, you are experiencing the victory of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Out of you will proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. The Lord say, you will not be small in the name of Jesus Christ. You will rejoice all the days of your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If you're here and there is some form of a wayward child and you have given up on that child, I speak life into that situation. You are coming back rejoicing in the name of Jesus Christ. Give him praise and give him thanks. Amen. You may be seated. All right, quickly, very quickly, we've got four announcements, about three. Number one, we're going to have a vigil here on the 26th. And um, I'm more certain over this thing more than ever, all right? Well, you can call it quarterly vigil, uh, but we don't do it until we get an instruction to do that. So here is the conversation. So Acts chapter 11, verse Actually, I was praying with the leaders yesterday at 7 a.m., and I was sharing this with them. Acts chapter 11, verse 17, all right? So there was a, everybody knows this conversation about Cornelius and Peter, all right? But there was something that was said about Cornelius. Cornelius was in his house praying. He didn't have the Holy Spirit. He was a Gentile. There was no reason that the Word of God would come to him. But here was what Peter said. Because the Jewish guys came to Peter, and I'm sure it was because Peter was a, was a leader that they didn't mob him. So they, had, they demanded from him. So what happened? He says, it is clear that God gave those Gentiles the same gift that he gave us. When we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I then to try to stop God? Now, we prayed the particular prayer. I wanted to pray this prayer, but the direction of it just changed that some of us might be in the way of what God wants to do. In your own life, you are the one standing in the way. And we prayed that prayer on your behalf. And I want you to go back home to pray that if there is anything in your life that God wants to do, and you are the one standing in the way, that God should remove, not now when you say remove you, whatever that thing is, that God should remove it in the name of Jesus. All right, do you get it? So we want to pray some of these aspects. So at the vigil, what we, what we want to do, we're praying four major prayers. Number one, that everybody in this house will be gainfully employed. And that gainfully employed means that they will be gain. All right? Number two, all right, we're praying for everyone who has any form of ailment or has scare about ailments, that every of those things will be removed completely. Number three, that every marriage and relationships that God has ordained, they are intact and there will be no form of demonic interference in the name of Jesus. And fourth, 
Number four, we're praying that every child in this place, all right, is secured under the mighty hand of God with the every supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Something happened at the midweek service. Somebody came to me, had a conversation, and by, I suspected from that conversation the interaction that the person didn't have faith. And so you will see, when Cornelius was praying, he was at the, I mean, he was praying at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, which is one of the watches. And then they had an angelic visitation. So we tagged this particular one, an angelic visitation. On that Friday, we're going to fast, and we're going to open the lines up from, on TCN and Gomu Mixella um, from 9 a.m. to 12 noon to 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. and then to 9 p.m. And then we gather here by 10 o'clock to pray, all right, for, three, for six hours. We pray three hours for the, for the co corporately, and then we pray three hours personally. And we're going to do something that probably we haven't, well, we haven't, well, we've done it before, but maybe at the vigil. We're going to have what they call meditative prayer, which means we're opening the scriptures and we're going to go around the circle on the scriptures, praying the word of God that what God has given to us. And then personally, you can go into that. We're also going to have meditative praise. There was something the Tribex did, all right, one of the Saturdays, powerful thing. And they had a seat here and then they were, they were praying, well, they were singing and chanting. It was one of the best experiences in worship. And I've told them they're going to open the, 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 the vigil um, on the 26th. So please, you want to be there. Aside from the fact that we're going to have coffee and we're also going to have um, tea, all right, it's going to be a powerful experience. And I can assure you, ask anybody who have been here, you won't even sleep for a second. Even though you, you like to sleep, you won't sleep. I can assure you. All right, so please be a part of it. Number two, I am unfolding the mysteries of the gospel. We'll be teaching on the subject in the final analysis. Every single person, all right, who have ever taken any form of decision, you, you wrap it all up at this point. You got married to someone. You have considered every single thing. And you said in the final analysis, I am better off with this particular person. There's what they call the Pareto principle, right? 80-20 um, rule. For those who are in business or you read a lot, you find that out. You find out that, all right, 80 your spouse cannot fulfill 100% of whatever it is that you need. It's always going to be 80-20. Some people will actually trade the 20% for 80%. They gamble. So maybe they see the 20, and this is one of the causes of probably challenges in marriages and stuff. They trade the 20% for 80%. And then they find out that absolutely, they actually have gambled their entire life. So join us at the midweek service. We'll be teaching on that particular thing. 80-20 principle, even in the service of God, in the worship of God, in all every area, areas of your life. So please join us at that. We're going to have a 10 minutes break for the United Tribe. Please, the United Tribe essentially today is just about focusing on the goal for 20, I'm sorry, the second quarter, which is Q2. All right, and it's a prayer conversation, not so much about talking, talking, talking. All right, just a prayer conversation, just for thoughts, um, the, the third service. We're also going to be restructuring um, what the entire thing is. I've told the leaders we're going to have a video for those. So if you're here for the very first time and you don't even know what this is about, just see someone at the back who will be dealing this thing. If you're here for the first time, what is United Tribe? If you're here for the second time, too, you're wearing here, you don't even know what it is. Just go to the back. Someone is going to fix you. Um, properly into that particular United Tribe. God bless you and have a wonderful Sunday. All right, hallelujah. Give God praise one more time in the house this morning. All right, hallelujah. Okay, so... Um, so we'd like to celebrate the people that are coming for the first time. So if this is the first time you're coming to TC and Gomu on a Sunday morning, can you just stand to your feet? We'd like to celebrate you. We'd like to welcome you. All right, please celebrate them. Welcome them in the house this morning. Hallelujah. Celebrate them, TC and Gomu. All right, you're welcome, dear sister. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hallelujah. All right, so we welcome you on behalf of our senior pastor, Pastor Pojo Yemade, who just preached, and his beautiful wife, Pastor Tony. We also welcome you on behalf of Pastor Wale as well. We thank you. We trust that you were blessed by that message, 
and would like to have a short reception with you. So the ushers will take you to my extreme right where there's some beautiful people waiting to receive you. God bless you. God bless you. Let's celebrate them one more time. Hallelujah. another group of special people I mean we say third time is a charm but this time around it's second time so if this is your second time you visited before and you're back again I uh, would like to celebrate you so if you're in the house this is your second time coming on a Sunday morning stand to your feet I would like to celebrate you hallelujah is there anyone you're coming for the second time to celebrate them all right hallelujah I don't see anyone standing but we thank God for his message. Hallelujah. Okay. So it's time to take our tithes and offering. So I'm sure you have the envelopes on your seat. If you need a tight envelope, you raise your hand, the ushers will hand you one. And just begin to speak to your offering, begin to speak to your seed. And if you need the online details, you can grab them. Or if you're not able to grab them right now, after the service, you can walk up to the help desk. And I'm sure that they will help you with the details that you require. Hallelujah. All right, can we have the offering confession? All right. Okay, one, two, go. And God is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come to me in abundance so that I always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your goodness. Heavenly Father, we bring our seed into the storehouse this morning and we ask that as we do so, O oh God, that you open the windows of heaven and pour us a blessing in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, O oh God, because as we continue to praise you, we declare that the earth by itself will yield its increase to us and that the Lord of the harvest will bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, so while, while we're giving that, we'll take the confession after the message. We missed that, all right? So can you just bring it down slightly? Okay, you can put it up. All right. So one, two, go. No, let's have it. Let's have it. Yes, let's have it while we're taking the offering. Every day I open my mouth wide, declaring the things I believe, calling into existence those things I see with my inner eyes as though they are, and God in return daily loads my life with benefits, advancing my position. Morning by morning, he opens my ear to hear his voice and has positioned me by his instructions, such that others call me fortunate, lucky, and blessed by what has occurred every day. I declare wisdom is a principal thing, therefore I have gotten wisdom, and with her, understanding. I call wisdom my sister, and understanding my closest friend. I have exalted wisdom, and she has promoted me, making my life glorious. She has brought me to the place of honor, because I have embraced her. I have listened to her, 
and receive their sayings. And so by the decisions I make, years are added every day to my life. God has taught me in the way of wisdom. He has led me in right paths. When I go out this week, my steps do not end in dark, narrow passages, nor do I waste time making wrong turns. Amen. Hallelujah. Are we done with our offering? All right, can we stand to our feet and close the service this morning? All right, can we just share the grace first of all? So just turn to your neighbor and share the grace. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. depth study of his word. Join us online every Wednesday as we recharge and receive all that heaven has prepared for us. Time is 6.45 p.m. West African time via www.mixler.com forward slash covenants at 7 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube. The Covenants Nation. Awake watchmen, we are set to stretch again in prayer to secure a tangible supply of the Spirit with which we can drown the world with the knowledge of the glory of God. Join us at this month's edition of Incubate, a six-hour prayer vigil for the young kings and priests of the Covenant Nation. Date is Friday, 19th April 2024. Time, 10 p.m. Venue, The Covenant Nation, Yaba, 400 Habat Macaulay Way, Jibo. Please note that registration is required at bit.ly forward slash incubate hyphen vigil. A new season is upon us. A kingdom of priests is rising. An exceeding great army. Come join us. We are excited to announce that applications have opened for the 2024 cohorts of the Platform Young Professionals Bootcamp. Are you between the ages of 20 and 25? Here is your chance to access mentorship and skills that will take your career and craft to the next level. Start your application today at www.youngprofessionalsng.com. Calling all church members interested in career advancement. Are you ready to take your professional journey to the next level? Join us for an empowering masterclass hosted by the Covenant Capital to prepare for the upcoming career fair on 25th May 2024 at the Covenant Place in Gomu. Mark your calendars for Saturdays, April 27th, May 4th and 11th, 2024 as we delve into crucial topics to boost your career prospects. Learn how to optimize your LinkedIn profile, network effectively, upskill for success, ace interviews and craft standout CVs. Don't miss this opportunity to gain invaluable insights and skills that will set you apart in today's competitive job market. Secure your spot now by registering at fair.covenant-capital.org. For baby naming and child dedication, kindly visit the information desk to get the registration links. If you would like to get the audio CD of today's sermon or any of our programs at the Covenant Nation, kindly place an order by sending a WhatsApp message to the media office on 0814-000-0224. Audio CDs are produced on an order basis only. Download all messages for free at elibrary.insightsforliving.org. Also, stream via Spotify. Apple Podcast and Google Podcast by simply searching for Insights by the Covenant Nation. Follow or subscribe and listen. Remember to send your feedback to respond at covenantchristiancenter.org because at the Covenant Nation, we love feedback. Connect with us on all our social media handles to stay updated at Covenant C Center at Pastor Kwaju on Instagram, Facebook and X. God bless you and have a productive week ahead. Start your day with our...